So welcome back to Tori Does Everything. For today, we are doing the episode Movies That Actually Scare Me because me and my cousin John here are both huge horror movie fans. We love horror movies and we watch them all the time. So I have to do because personally not a lot actually scares me. So, oh, something's stuck. Oh, oh, it's your Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your green screen's making it go away, though. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So, what is your first honorable mention? Uh, it's Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, I can't. Re- this is a, is it a '90s movie? An '80s I late? Is. I can't remember. It's like a psychological horror. Like, are we gonna do spoilers in this? Can we? Are, are we gonna warn yeah. people? Like, it, okay. So okay. he's dying through this whole film, but you know, you don't know that when you're watching it. Like, he's killed in Vietnam, and he's, um kind of holding on to his life force and he's living like this hallucinatory life back in, in, a, in the States, but he's dying and he dies in, in Vietnam. And, um, there's all these weird sort of like, um, hallucinations of like demons and hell. And, um, there's sort of almost like acid trip sort of visuals in this film. It's unnerving to watch. And there's this, uh, kind of like this paranormal feel. You'll see like threads through all of the films I like pick today. There's either paranormal or haunted houses or demons, except with the, I think with one outlier. But there's like a paranormal and like darkened um, atmosphere to this film. I think it's massively underrated. And I know they did a remake, but I haven't seen it. And um, but I, I love the original. And I will say for anyone watching, if you have young children watch. <laughs> Maybe don't watch it with them because I'm talking about some very, very dark and disturbing movies on my list. So, yeah. So, my honorable mention is going to be not the original, but the remake of Pet Cemetery from like 2019, I think. I think is when it came out. Um, the original had a few scary moments, but overall, very, very campy, very 80s. You can definitely tell when it was made. So, you know, to me, I, I mean, I like it, but it doesn't scare me that much. And then if you watch the remake, they definitely make the tone a lot darker, a lot more gritty, I guess. I don't I don't know how to put it exactly. But, yeah, it's it's a pretty dark movie about some good gore effects in it. So if you're into that, go give it a watch. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think I'm probably partial to the original. Up to a bit that's like most of Stephen King's films, the ending is not spectacular, and um, I don't think they pull off the demonic kid very well in the original. And um, but up to the part where they bury him, I think it's it's a pretty <laughs> scary film. Um, kids getting killed, you know, ran over by a truck is a scary image, and demonic cat is a scary image, and the the creepy guy across the street, um, who's very intrusive, um, has poor boundaries. That guy. Um, if you're scared of old people in general, um, that film could be scary, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I would think if you're scared of old people, just go watch The Taking of Deborah Logan if you're scared of old people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I, Fear of Old People has its own horror movie threat. We could probably do a separate um, for that maybe someday. So what's your what's next your, uh, uh, My next, The Conjuring. I, and I almost feel like I just... Um, when I was putting my list together, I was, first of all, this took all day. Like this took me a, f- I was very self-conscious about making this list. And, um, when I was finished with it, I, I realized I didn't think I had anything beyond like the mid eighties in, in, on my list. And, um, it's not like they haven't made good more horror movies since, um, the bears won the Super Bowl. Um, but I did like the conjuring, the conjuring I felt was worthy of an honorable mention, Again, it's a haunted house, and who's not scared of a creepy 1970s haunted house? Um, it involves demonic forces. There's really good jump scares in this film, actually. Um, yeah, and I like the 1970s um, overlay. You know, the design of this film reminds you of, like, The Exorcist and Amityville. So. The cast is so good. Like, Patrick Wilson mm-hmm. and Vera Farmiga are, like, pretty much like the horror movie power couple to me. They're they're so good together. If totally only they've been that good in real life, <laughs> <laughs> and not a bunch of frauds. Yeah, I think they're perfectly cast, and I can't wait. I think there's going to be a Conjuring, 
series coming up on HBO that I'm looking forward to watching that. So I don't think I've even seen the third one yet. I can't remember that after, you know, they all kind of start running together. I think I remember seeing the second one. I'm not sure if I saw the third. What's your second honorable mention? Okay, so my last honorable mention is the movie Seven from the 90s with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, Gwyneth Paltrow, pretty much like the it 90s cast. So, uh, yeah, this movie's very dark, and I like that for a disturbing movie, it really doesn't show that much violence. It really just, like, talks about mm-hmm. it, which I find kind of refreshing because then you have stuff that's like Tusk where they just show everything and then... And I'm not even talking about the movie because it's so stupid, but yeah, just in general, I find movies with violence uh, implied and not fully shown to be better, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, I really like Seven a lot. Um, we have a famous meme and line from that movie that many of us quote, um, <laughs> right? What's in the box? We use that quite a bit. That's a fun mm-hmm. thing to say now. And um I think Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt were great in this film. I do like this thread of like criminal horror. You know, I do like this is a great film and films like it are just fun to watch. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs, Seven. We won't throw long legs into this. It doesn't deserve yeah. to be included, right? <laughs> luckily, I wore, luckily, I wore my long legs today for this video, Tori. I got my long legs on and I still don't know what that means and neither do you. Neither does anybody, I think, except for maybe Nicolas Cage might understand what that means. But, um, but yeah, Corey's that's a got great... her short legs on. She's got her yeah. short legs on today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. What's your number five? The original Amityville. I can't remember. All these movies I saw when I was young, you know, like under 13 years old, I think. And... I wanted to put food like the very first horror movie I saw was Food of the Gods with my John Senior took me to see that in a movie theater. And I just remember I ran out of the it's one of my earliest memories that I can grab onto where I was like screaming <laughs> bloody murder running down the aisle of um, the Valley Forge old Valley Forge Theater in Washington. And I just remember he walked out because he couldn't take me my screaming. And then I just like ran after him, at, you know, out of the movie theater. So Food of the Gods. Well, I'm rewatching it. It's not that scary, but it's something gets into like the mercury or something gets into the, into the local water source and it makes animals big. So you got giant rats eating people and like giant mosquitoes killing people. But yeah, I was young when I saw Amityville. This, I mean, again, like this implied horror, that's the things you don't see, like Jody. You realize how, about more than halfway through the film that um, the kid's imaginary friend Jody is a, a real demonic thing, like it's a being. But we don't see it. You know, the only thing you see of it is like two glowing eyes when the mom goes to like close the window and Jody's like sitting out there. Um, Portal to Hell in the Basement. That would scare any child, I would imagine. Creepy old basements also creep me out. But the scene where the priest is comes to bless the house while the family's out having like a, a vacation day and he's in the house by himself and there's like a disembodied voice that tells him to get out. Every time I watch that scene, I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it. I get goosebumps on the back of my neck, my arms, and my legs. Anytime I see or think about that scene where the flies are coming in, you just like can almost, it's almost tangible to feel like that demonic presence that's in the house at that moment. But yeah, Enemy Bill, that's why it's my number five. And the remix um, with Ryan Reynolds is actually also very good. If you've not seen the original or the remake, I would suggest taking a, sh- a look at both of those if you like the style of film. Yeah, I I started the first one, but I never really finished it because, like, I, get, I don't think I really got into it just because, like, whenever I started it, I already knew that in real life it was a scam, that the house wasn't really haunted. So I think that probably tainted the movie for me. And, you know, I mean, I, I like The Conjuring as well, but, I mean, I know that, once again, the houses were not probably haunted. So, uh, but I didn't know that whenever I first watched them. So I think that that made a difference for sure. Gotcha. So my number five is The Conjuring 2. So Mm -hmm. this one actually scared me a lot more than the first one. The first one to me is just okay. Like, it's all right. I'll watch it every now and again. But second one is like the scariest one in the series to me. Like 100%. The 
part where the nun is walking down the hallway. Ugh, I don't like it. Nuh-uh. <laughs> yeah, the scene where this, I think, again, that this disembodied voice thing just freaks me out, where the voice says, my house. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty creepy. Mm-hmm. And also, the, the CGI of this movie is so good. Mm-hmm. Like, that one scene where they're, like, talking to the spirit in the background, and in the background, you can, like, see it slowly shift into the person in the chair. Mm-hmm. It's just really well done, in my opinion. What's your number four? Let's see. Can I remember my number four, Mom? The Shining. Thank you. So, do I need to go into any, like, detail about how good this horror movie is? Um... So it came out in 1980. So again, this is when we couldn't go see R-rated movies. So I didn't get to see this in the theater, but I think I saw it whenever it came out on like Cinemax or HBO. I was probably 12 or 13, maybe at that time. It's a haunted house. I mean, what else do I need to say? Um, I think the what's really scary about other than the music, they do the music in this is done very well. Um, it builds anxiety and tension. Um, but it's the atmosphere, like it said, the hotel set in a dark, isolated, kind of an impressed sort of place. And there's all these open spaces, like they use the open space so well, um, the hallways, etc. in this film. Um, there's a lot of good misplaced jump scares, like usually like, and it comes with like a symbol crash. Like when you first see the twins, you know, you get a symbol crash with the twins um, or you're seeing like when they're chopped up, you know, you get the symbol crash jump scare. Um, it's like this invisible horror, like when the kid's going through the hallways on, in his, um, his scooter and you're, yeah. And you're just like, you know, what's around the corner. And finally there is something around the corner, you know? And, um, and it also includes family conflict and domestic violence, which is never fun to watch. Um, so there's this, and it's well acted, um, you know, um, Jack, is it Jack Nicholson? Yeah. He is so good in this movie. Um, Shelley Duvall, I mean, I think they were perfectly cast for this. Also, like, the, we know, like, there's someone else shining through Tony. We don't know if, I mean, you read the book. I have not. I know you're going to say the book is better than the film. Um, maybe you can answer the question if Tony, is that a dead spirit talking to him? Or is it someone else shining um, who is, who is talking to Tony? But the conversations with Tony are creepy because you kind of get the feeling at some point that this is not... Um, something in this kid's imagination, like he's communicating with someone. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this film. I think that Tony's just his. Uh, it, that's him in the future. It's him uh, talking to himself as a child because he shines. His middle name is like Anthony. So mm-hmm. it turns out that Tony is Anthony in the future. It's a very good book. The book is way better than the movie. It's just that it's like if. You took the worst part of the book and made it into a movie. And then if, if you read the book, it's just so much better. Way, way scarier, in my opinion. And if you go for Dr. Sleep, it's the opposite. Yep, the movie's better. The movie's better than the book. So mm-hmm. we read both, and they flip-flopped. Yep. Mm-hmm. I did like Dr. Sleep, but I did not. I didn't was not scared of Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep was... No, I wasn't. Either. Um... I don't, would not it say good, it's a scary movie, scary. but yeah, it's definitely a great and entertaining movie to watch. And um, there's some horror elements to it. Um, the kid getting killed, um, the baseball kid getting killed was not pleasant. Um, and so how they get the steam out of kids and that people in that movie is they torture them. Um, so, yeah, that's there's some hard moments in that film to watch. But overall, I, I, I wouldn't consider it, you know, a super scary film. But, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. What's your number four? My number four is a movie that not a lot of people know about, so I don't know if you're going to have seen this or not. It's considered more of a thriller. I consider it to be horror, but it's called The, the Divide. Have you seen that? Uh, maybe if you just start talking about it, I'll see if I've seen it. It doesn't okay. sound familiar. Um, there's like a couple fun actors in it, but really, I really think it's mainly more indie actors, but it's about this um, bomb shelter in New York City that these people have to go hide in because there's, like, a nuclear bomb that goes off. and It's like post-apocalyptic movie, but that's not what's scary about it. If you go into an apocalyptic horror movie thinking, oh, it's apocalyptic, you're probably going to guess, oh, I'm guessing the horror comes from 
zombies or atomic bomb stuff like nuclear radiation. Uh, yeah, that is none of the horror in this movie. It is very, very brutal in its depiction against women. That's all I'll say, but it is very, very brutal and real, and ugh, it's not a fun movie to watch. <laughs> it's a good I've not movie, seen but it. it's not a fun movie. I can't wait to watch it. I'll, I'll put it on the top of my list once we get into the Halloween season. Oh, we're already here, right? When I have some fun. Like, yeah. When I have a free moment, I will take a, a look at it. Yeah, I think it was on Tubi when I watched it. I don't know if it still is, but if it's still on there, it'll be free to watch then. On a side note, these apocalyptic planets crashing into the Earth, atomic bombs going off. There was a movie called The Day After that I almost put into my honorable mention, but it was a made-for-TV film. That thing terrified me because the Cold War was real when I was a kid. New, you know, they used nuclear war a lot in politics and in pol- political talk. Um, that film is a film about, you know, the World War Three and, you know, America getting attacked by um, nuclear weapons and people getting vaporized, you know, while they're having picnics and stuff like that. Um, that was pretty scary and real, you know, when I was a kid. So turns out all we needed was a bunch of school disc to hide under. True. Yeah. <laughs> duck, and co- duck and cover. And in the military, they tell you, all you have to do is face the blast. So somehow, if you just drop down on the ground and face the blast with your head with your face down, you will survive the nuclear attack. <laughs> I guess it's worth a try. It's your only option. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I actually didn't put this on my list because I didn't think of it till now. But to me, the most terrifying war movie is, is not even a horror movie, but it has to be Johnny Got His Gun. That movie is dark it is. and very, very realistic in its depictions of things, which is surprising considering how old it is. But, yeah, holds up very well. I agree. So are we on three? Mm-hmm. So is what's it, your number three? Your mom will tell me. It's is the, it the Omen from the 1976. Omen. Man, again, there's a thread here, like the demonic thread through m- many of these films. And so the... Avi Santini main theme for the Omen is maybe we can cue the music. I don't know if we can splice that in at some point, but super creepy. Uh, the, uh, the theme to this film is just done so well. Uh, it's a haunting track. Um, you know, it has disturbing images. You've got in, infanticide. So you realize at the end of the movie that the original child is murdered. Suicide by hanging in a decapitation. It's like, I think it's a high point for religious horror. It's the Antichrist. I mean, what's what's more scary than that, you know? So it's the it's the young story, you know, of the Antichrist. Just how, like, animals react around him. And then the, the creepy, you know, um, bodyguard maid that gets that moves herself into the home. And it's, it's a scary film. The graveyard scene at the end where they're digging up the graves is just when the dogs come and it's there's a storm. I mean, it's that is a creepy scene. I haven't actually seen this. I'll have to go watch it. Yeah, the remake is also not terrible. Um, that might be interesting for you to like look at, watch the original, watch the remake, and see which one you like better. Um, I would almost say Omen Two might even be scarier than the original Omen. But yeah, I, I mean it's a classic. You know, I can't make a horror top five list without putting the Omen on it. Mm-hmm. So my number three is a movie that we've actually talked about before, and it's one that disturbed me. And I know that it kind of freaked you out too. Is Possum. Mm-hmm. This movie is so dark and disturbing, and oof, it is very, once again, real with its depictions of abuse, and they fully show at the end, and I'm like, please stop, please, <laughs> please just make this more implication, and not this, mm-hmm. please. It's very real, and I will say, while I do think that they should have not <laughs> shown all that, it is very well done in its uh, depictions and like metaphors of trauma and uh, childhood abuse and things like that. So, you know, it's well done in that, but still, they did not have to go that far. And I did not know I watched it. So 16 year old me was in for a shock. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a creepy spider puppet. Yeah. Which is always scary. Yeah, and that turns out to not be that important in the whole movie. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is a the um 
again, these films, it sort of reminds me a little bit of Jacob's Ladder where you don't know the you're kind of like putting yourself in this place of the character and you don't know like what's real and what's not real, you know, as you're watching this. Yeah, that's a scary, it's a scary, that is definitely a scary movie. So what's your next one? My number two, it's um, Poltergeist in 1982. And I think I was 11 when I saw this. I mean, 11 year old me scared of this. I'm still scared of the Poltergeist movie. Um, I was after I saw this, we had this dark, the original house we lived in on Wood Street had this um, creepy basement. Matt probably remembers it. Um, that yeah. was all it was like cemented. It was dark no matter, and it had, you know, like the lighting you'd have to you'd have to walk five foot or six foot to go turn a light on through the, from the ceiling. So there was a fruit cellar. There's a dark, creepy um, stairwell that was always like wet and damp and um, cold. And then there was a fruit cellar, and then you'd walk into the main um, basement area where that's where we had our shower. And so after I saw Poltergeist, I was scared for about a month and a half to take a shower down there. I mean, that's how much that film scared me. But again, it's, we're back to Satan, basically, because so the the dark presence that is in limbo with Carol Ann is the beast. Um, and you get to see him kind of like present himself um, when they're trying to um, rescue her from the limbo um, area or, or space or wherever she gets sucked into. Um, but it also includes like these um, notions of separation from family. Um, again, it's a haunted house. Um, so this fear of a corrupted home is like hovering over this film. And the fact that the film has a curse on it. Now, I don't know all the details, but I know, I know a lot of bad things happen to folks who um, acted and were on the production crew of this film. Um, but even outside of that, you know, this movie scared me quite a bit. And it's an entertaining film as well if you – you know Spielberg's kind of style. He likes to splice in humorous moments in whatever kind of film he's making. And and these are in here as well. And I think it's like across the board, like very well acted, especially the parents do a really good job in this movie. Yeah, I think it's very well acted. And it's, did you know that the um, the bodies in the pool were, were real skeletons? I have heard that, life? yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once again, there was also darkness in real life encapsulating this movie so if you're interested in cursed movies like this and the crow go watch it check it out my number two is something that i don't know if you've seen before and even though it's very well done i do not recommend watching it because it is the most traumatic movie i've ever seen in my whole life (laughs) and that is the strange thing about the johnsons have you seen this i have not okay so it was um Ari Aster's first movie. He did like Hereditary and Midsummer. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And let's just, well, Hereditary is scary. It's got nothing on this movie. All right. This movie is so dark that I can't even say what it's about on here because, <laughs> my gosh, it, it just from the first minute you start watching, you go, oh my gosh. <laughs> and it doesn't get any better from there. It just is, uh, it's crazy. Okay, I'll say what it's about. It's about incest, right? Yeah. Okay. It's about a son that's in love with his father. Gotcha. Okay, so there's that's why you don't want to watch it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that that's what this was about whenever I started it. It, I, it, was, it was free on YouTube, so I thought, it's free on YouTube. It can't be that bad. It can be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... If you want to watch a movie about a son in love with his father, do I have the movie for you? Gotcha. So, Dad, what are your what are your picks? Uh, they wouldn't let me put my real two scariest movies on there because it would have trumped everybody's list. So I had to go with two mentions here. The first one is Phantasm because I was about seven years old when I was in a room where this movie was on. And I didn't sleep for about six weeks after that. That tall old man terrified me in my nightmares for weeks. And those flying metal balls with the spikes on them, I was afraid of those. My second pick is Nightmare on Elm Street 3, where he made that marionette, where he made the marionette out of the guy. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, that's a pretty gnarly scene. Yeah, that, that, that got me pretty good when I was a kid. 
Someone with stir picks. Um, I will always think Jeepers Creepers is scary, and I know I'm lame, but that is a scary movie to me. I don't like. I think it's because it's gross. Anything gross kind of creeps me out. Mm. But the, my real pick, if I'm gonna be a, have give a serious pick, is gonna be the movie It. And I'm talking about the newer one, not the older one. The older one's a little too comedic for me, but like the new one where he's in the basement and it's all the water and Georgie is talking to his brother. And then all of a sudden it's it. And he's scuttling across the bottom of the yeah. the basement. That gives me the willies every time I see it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so scary. But, I think it's scary because of Beverly's dad and not because of it itself. I agree. I'm not saying that whole movie scares me, but there's bits in it that mm-hmm. does. So, um, yeah. But my scariest one is actually Tori's number one. So we'll let John do his mm-hmm. and then Tori can close us out. Mm-hmm. Great. This is like, you might think I should have put more thought into this and like it's an easy grab, but it's Jaws. I mean, is there a scarier film for a young kid to watch? A giant shark um, that eats people. And, um, the eight children specifically. <laughs> yeah, the the um the kid that gets um eaten on the raft is is pretty graphic. And just really well the shot is really well done and you see the blood like spraying up, you know, in the air um on that first bite. And um you know, and the what's really interesting about this film is like it's the again, it's like what's unseen. Tori, and you really don't even don't even see the shark really till the end of the film. But anytime mm-hmm. they play the music, you're just like, oh, we're near water and the music's playing. And you're just like, now you're the anxiety is getting ramped up as you're watching this because you don't know. And also the bottom scenes where you're seeing like people swimming and their legs kicking and they start playing the music. And you're just like, OK, we're just like waiting for someone to get like bitten in half kind of. And uh, I didn't get to see this when it was originally released because I was only eight, but I saw it. I begged John Sr. to take me to it when it was re-released, which I think was uh, close to 1980. It might have been like 1979, I think, maybe even uh, for my birthday present. I wanted to go see Jaws, and I was f- so freaked out after I got out of the movie theater and saw that. Yeah, it's the fear of the unknown, like the unseen shark, and that it's a primal fear. Lots of people have a shark phobia. No one wants to. And it just, you know, it taps into, the, like, it reminds us how vulnerable vulnerable we are. You're There's total vulnerability if, if you're in the water and there's a an apex predator who d- takes note of you um then you're at that that thing's mercy essentially and so those things play into this film so that is why it is my number one do you go swimming in the ocean i do we've been since then i've been swimming i've been in the ocean many times with gabby on vacations i will say i will not go super deep i will not go super far mm. out uh, from shore although now we know like you're not safe on the shore really either but yeah i would not want to get bitten by a shark i don't i don't know many people that would and um <laughs> I, but I don't, I don't carry that kind of like um phobia with me into adulthood but as a kid i mean this film made people i think that's the reason why many people grew up not knowing how to swim is because after they saw jaws um, they would not get into the water for any reason they wouldn't get into pools like people were afraid to go into their local pool or even like fresh water or lakes like people would not go into the water after seeing this film but i have seen like people will re-watch this and they'll have sort of like get-togethers or conventions where they will watch this on the ocean and they'll play it on a mm-hmm. movie screen and they're, they're all out there on their floaties at night like watching this film so that's probably something i would not do Same. <laughs> i wouldn't answer the door when someone knocked on the door with a candy gram yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's weird is that I have a phobia of the ocean, but this movie doesn't freak me out. I don't know why, but, like, I can watch this just fine. But if you sh- show a picture of that stupid animatronic dinosaur on the Jurassic Park ride underwater, I hate that thing so much. <laughs> I don't know why that scares me more than the Jaws movie, but it does. So, very happy. I don't know. But, anyway, my number one and mom's number one that she couldn't say because it was my number one, is Us by Jordan Peele. Have you seen this? Oh, yes, I have seen Us, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this movie is really scary, very... I mean, it's not like... I wouldn't say it's disturbing because it's not really... It doesn't have stuff in it that, like, 
my last pet had. But it's it's very scary, very eerie, very unsettling. Just very well done in timing, I guess, and the lighting and just everything like that that goes into making a good horror movie mm-hmm. was done really, really well in this. So, yeah, I think it's on Hulu. At least it was. I don't know if it still is, but if you have that, then maybe you can go watch it if you haven't seen it. But, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Go in the description and check out my other channels, John's channel, and my merch store. Bye! Hi! Hey! <laughs> Actually, the scariest movie of all time is Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. It was real (laughs) ghost. And Tori now has merch. Go check it out at bonfire.com. Link in the description and under the About tab. Bye!